Alright, welcome back to Sonic Lost World. Let's finish up Sky Road, shall we? Oh no, not the Minecraft trees! <laughs> God. I like how they just keep using like a random, like, f like grassy field area for like the, um, for like these cutscenes. Like they did it in Generations and then they just use it for this game as well. It's just like... <laughs> oh no, it's just kind of funny. Okay, so I remember this level being uh, fairly lengthy. I think this this level is a pretty good, uh, um, like, level before the final world. It, it does have some decent build-up, and it's one of the more challenging levels in the game so far, so... Yeah. I know I keep mentioning about, like, talking about the, the writing issues of this game, but... I think one of the issues I ha like another one of the issues I have is the fact that like the um the writing feels like it just having it having the characters say stuff like die and um like oh I'm gonna get fat by eating your black heart and all this other stuff like if things saying stuff like that equates to story being dark and it just it doesn't really work like, like that like when the other games were dark. They didn't have to shove it in your face like, oh, we're trying to be serious and um, have like some dark uh, undertones with our story or anything. Like, they just had that. Like, they, they didn't need to go out of the way to say, oh, yeah, we're being edgy. Like, some like sometimes the stories just were like getting more serious and uh, um, had darker elements. Like, SA2, like, even, like, SA1, even. Um, like the massacre of the Akinda tribe and stuff like that, um, and they they just had that. They didn't need to like shove it in your face. Yeah, like just <laughs> whoa, <laughs> we're saying like things that uh, you pro probably wouldn't expect from a kids game and stuff like that. Like they didn't need to do that. <laughs> it's like one of those problems I have with the writing in these games, where like it's. When they're trying to make it more serious, it just doesn't work, and it, they make it way too forced. But, yeah. A lot of just sliding on sand, sand and stuff. I'll say, one thing I did want to bring up is that the, um, an issue a lot of people seem to have with this game is the fact that, like, it's a lot more slower paced compared to most Sonic games. And a lot of people don't really like that too much. And while I can I can understand that to a degree, I this is definitely one of the slower paced Sonic games. Uh, in terms of the main series, it might be the slowest. I might have to think about that. But uh, well, uh, not not counting like spin-offs or anything like that, because I haven't played literally every Sonic game, uh, so I wouldn't be able to say for certain if this is the slowest Sonic game overall, but yeah, it's definitely slower than most, so I can understand people not being super thrilled about that. Um, I definitely would prefer the speed to be upped a little bit, mainly for the 2D sections, because I feel like... I feel like... I definitely feel like the 2D sections are... Oh. Okay, I didn't realise it did that. I definitely feel like the 2D sections... Uh, have your movement way maybe a bit too slow. I think that could have been sped up a bit, but I don't mind it too much because there are a lot of cool tricks you can do to to like actually speed yourself up a lot. Mainly with like parkour and spin dash tricks and all that. Um, but yeah, in terms of like just the core platforming and level level design and how everything works, it's definitely. It definitely has a slower, does like general level design mentality than other game, the other Sonic games do, and I definitely don't think it's ideal, but 
I like the level design in this game enough that I don't mind it too much. Like, I'm one of those people that don't particularly mind it when, like, a Sonic game or a Sonic level tries to do a bit more, be a bit more methodical and, like, slow paced with its platforming elements. Um, oh, yeah, th this level also goes by the logic of, like, if you can't see the floor, you, you just die. So you need to watch out for that. Um, but yeah, I'm one of those people that don't mind slower elements in Sonic games. So, this game being a bit more slower paced compared to, like, especially the boost games, which came right before this, uh, I don't mind it too much. And I, I guess that's, like, why it's so, it's so jarring, because, like, the games before this, we had, like, Colors, Gens, and all that, which all had the boost, which are all, like, very fast paced games. Uh, contrary to what people say about Colors. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I definitely understand it. Uh, Again, I think they they could have sp sped some of this stuff up, but, you know. For what they, what they were trying to do, I I do think I do think the the speed works with the levels they were like built for in this game, and again with like the tricks you can do with the parkour and all that. Um, there's definitely ways you can play this game fast. Like Sonic isn't necessarily slow in this game. It's just that like. If you compare it to like other games in the series, then yeah, he is slow. But it's just about matter of comparison, uh, and you know, just the way the levels are designed, I guess. But you know. Okay. Okay, King. It's getting to the point of the game where the platforming's getting a lot more treacherous, so... I guess talking about just movesets and whatnot, I don't think- I don't know if I've- I might have talked a bit about the- the, uh, controls and all that throughout the playthrough, but, um... With the run button, um... Oh yeah, I can just roll like this. I don't know if that really does anything, but... Um... But yeah, with the run button though, like... I... I'm kind of indifferent to it. Like, I don't mind that it's a thing. But I, I definitely don't think it was super necessary. Playtime is over, Hedgehog. Like, this game doesn't really have like, specific momentum or anything. It basically- or, or like... Like, gradually building up speed or anything. It, it's basically, you have free- you just have your free speeds, and that's about it. I, again, I think it works fine for what, this, for what this game is designed for, but it's definitely not my ideal way to uh, have, like, the, the sort of control, I guess. Because so I think you can- yeah. You can knock him into the lasers. I'll say this, like, it's not amazing, but at least Zavok's boss fights are at least a little bit more involved than the other ones. It's not saying a lot, but, like, at least there's something here. <laughs> Yeah, th this L Lost World is basically just a bunch of up ups and downs because it's like I've been very positive, but I've also been very negative. Like as a game, I really like it, but like there's a lot of just confusing elements to its core design that just again just kind of confuse me. The story is tr tr <laughs> to be blunt trash, um, but like. I don't know, the level design, I think, overall is fairly solid, and the music's really good, and as we'll see later on, it has a fairly ch challenging post-game as well, and it's... I, I don't know, it it's just such a... Com <laughs> it's a complicated game. <laughs>
you will be the instrument of my revenge. Yeah, it'll be fun to have your little buddy scramble you like an omelet. <laughs> omelet. Enjoy your last moments of free will. When we return, you will be our slave. You ain't get like a guard robe or anything, you just leave. I built a TV out of paper clips and reprogrammed a supercomputer using dishwashing detergent and a toothpick. I'm not even gonna need the detergent for this one. <laughs> So yeah, final world. So we had to refight the deadly six again. They, I do, li I like how they have they build build them up as like this epic showdown. But the man, it's really not that much different, not that much more difficult co compared to their regular fights. Um, I will say this: the this level is just this one planetoid, and to get the red rings, you need to basically wait around for them to drop from the sky. So. The, that does give them a chance to like actually do more of their attacks and stuff, so I guess that can be a bit interesting, but, but yeah, otherwise the, the, these guys still just aren't much. They, they, it's the, again, they're a little bit more interesting than before, like I had to like lure Zoma to the, uh, the lava there, um, and they're more aggressive generally, but like otherwise, they're still not. They're still not the most like difficult fights. Yeah. I say that, but I'm kind of failing right now. <laughs> uh, where the heck is? There it is. Okay. And they don't like jump away. Uh, like they flat out, flat out just. Okay, good. Uh, they they flat out just like turn into smoke and disappear. So like, and a lot of these guys don't come back. So like, did, did, are we killing them? Like, what's going on? Because I, because I, I I say that because the um. Uh, yeah, I, I say that because the, um, what is it, the, uh, thing, for me, the, the, the animations for when you beat them in the, in their respective worlds, um, like, they specifically jump away, but they made them, like, turn into a puff of smoke here, so it's like, I don't know what's going on. So I, I'm just gonna assume we just kill these guys. <laughs> like, outside, out, like, Zavok, when we fight him, like, you don't see him, like, vanish or anything, so, like, and he, I, I don't, oh my god, dude, I keep on doing that, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. These bosses could have been cool, but, like, 
they just... The charged homing attack is just so busted, dude. Oh, that was good. Please. Okay. Alright, I'm just gonna stand here. Because, like, the game will, like, force you to jump and, like, put you in a specific spot. Oh, God. I like how he had like all those like ac acrobatic moves in like the first cutscene we saw of him, and then the the boss fight is just just sends out a bunch of like energy balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not getting that. That that was kind of an awful showing, but it's fine. Alright, now for a, what a lot of people consider a huge difficulty spike. So, see how this goes. Because it's another. It's the second of the rail stages, which I already talked about how I really like these. And that still holds true for this one, because I really love the challenge and the level design they make with these stages. It feels like one of the most focused in terms of just general design and difficulty balancing in in this game. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with just your jumps and how far you can go with your speed and whatnot. But yeah, these are the bo the minecarts that have like those giant free bombs. Those are instant kill, even if you have like supersonic, I think. So yeah, you gotta be really careful here. This definitely is one of the trickier levels in the game. So. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's important to know, like, when's best to hold forward to, like, build up speed. And uh, when's best to just hold back because you don't always want to be going at like your top speed in this stage, unless you want to just keep dying. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely a little bit of trial and error. But like, I don't know I, I I like this kind of stage because it it's um it just feels rewarding to conquer, and it's like one of those things where you where you. You get past a really difficult stage and it just feels very rewarding. It's that it's like that kind of thing, you know? Okay. And it has a good pacing with its obstacles as well. Like there's always something going on that you need to look out for. And I think it's as well, like with the with the rails in a lot of these games, like while I do en I enjoy like being on the rails in Sonic games, they kind of got more and more uh, basic in terms of like their function. Ever like basically ever since like Heroes onwards, like they slowly made the rail rail mechanics more and more simplistic and like the boost games they it's basically you, you either you're either just going on the rails normally or you're boosting and there's not really much you can do to influence your speed or uh, anything like that otherwise so it's like I don't know it, it, while like being on the rails in like as a just pure concept is is cool. They 
kind of just stopped being very... Like, the the idea of... What am I trying to say? Like, just being on a rail is just... Stop being, like, super exciting in this series, like, a long time ago. Because, like, SA2... Like, there are so many different variables. You could go really fast. You could get find all these secret pathways. And, like, it was just so fun, fun to mess around with in that game. And then games preceding that just removed a lot of the, um, whatchamacallit, uh, removed a lot of the depth that made it fun. And I like that this game, while it doesn't have, like, the elements of SA2, it tried something unique with its level design, and it feels, like, it feels like the most you can do with, like, rails in a Sonic game in a hot minute. Like, just from the pure level design of it, like, alone. Because you, but yeah, you, you can't really, you can't really speed up rail, rails like you could in SA2. There's only three specific rail speeds and that's it. But like, the, the fact that you have to be a lot more deliberate with your jumps and platforming and the at general, like, design of the level itself demands a lot more preci precision from you. I think it just makes it more engaging as a whole. Like, just the simple act of, like, the level, like, the level design itself being more elaborate and difficult. Yeah, I... Okay, so... I think... I mentioned it, I think, in Colors, where, like... I'm kind of off, off and on with Roger. I don't mind him too much, but, like... I think it was... I think it was fairly good in Colors, Colors and Generations, but I... I'm not a fan of his performance in this game. I, I think he's just... It feels like he's just trying too hard. Yep. And uh, they kind of just ignore that in the next cutscene. <laughs> uh, I really don't know, don't know how to feel about it. Like, again, it's one of those things where, like, the story has, like, these uh, cool ideas and concepts, but, like, it doesn't really do anything with it. I've, like, it, it, it kind of just throws them all... throw it all away. <laughs> but, like, it just throws stuff away before it can even really do much with, it, with its uh, ideas. Like, turning Tails into a robot and, like, all this other stuff, like, that's a <laughs> very bold choice for, a, like, a Sonic story, but, like, they don't ever do anything with it, so it's like, why do you, who cares? Like, why would you even bother? And it's just like, eh. It just comes, like, this, a lot of the story elements in this game just kind of come off as, like, why did you even bother trying if you're not gonna, like, go the full mile and actually make this mean something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this is also a very long and difficult stage. It's also the last main level of the game, because the ne next stage is just a boss fight. Yeah, you do need to be careful here, because it can be a little bit easy to, like, home an attack and accidentally, like, hit the spikes in the ceiling. So you just, yeah, just wait until Xena, like, just gets to the a side of the seesaw platform and you should be good. Oh, there's a butt up up there. I can risk it. 
sure. <laughs> Yeah, the this theme's fairly generic. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of this one. Like, it gets the job done, but it's it's kind of just oh yeah, it's the lava world. That's it. It doesn't like it, it's not. It's fairly it, it's compared comparing it to other so, like final uh, stage music in Sonic games is really generic. But yeah. Like th this game is just in general just been a series series of ups and downs, including the music. Like some of these tracks are like really good, um, but other ones are like while they're not bad per se, they're also just kind of there. So it's just again this game is just so weird. <laughs> it's hard to know what to make of it sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting to know, like, a lot of the parkour segments are, op like, tend to be optional, like, the, it, I know the 3DS version requires it a lot more, but, yeah. But yeah, the um, the 3DS version, like, uh, you, I, I remember it like requiring you to use the the. Uh, what call it? What was, I'm losing track of my train of thought. Um, it requires you to use the parkour a lot more often than the Wii version, whereas this this version usually requires it for like red ring areas or just using a, going through a different pathway. So, which I, which is interesting, I guess. Considering how th this game doesn't really teach you its mechanics very well, I, I guess it's a good thing it doesn't require it too much, because otherwise uh, people would have more issues with it than they already do. But yeah. But yeah, you don't need to fight him directly, just get kind of get to the top. Yeah, we just <laughs> put him in lava, uh, and he's like, you see what I mean? Like, it, I, I swear to God, we're just killing these guys, and I also just killed myself. But you gotta love how like the we have like a new wisp, like we have the hover wisp in in this what in this level, which I don't think has been used up to this point, and it's like. I'm not sure how I f how I feel about like having like a new wisp power for like the literal last stage and that's it. Like what the hell. And the thing is like it doesn't even do the colors thing where like you unlock more color powers as you go through the game and you can revisit old stages uh, with new powers. It do I it doesn't do that. So like you go through a level and all the wisps will be active. Um, so like, it, it, you know in Colors you get like the Nega Wisp in Asteroid Coaster, which is the last main world of that game, but the thing is with that, you can go back to old levels that will have the Nega Wisp unlocked, so you have more areas to use it in, but in this game that doesn't happen, so the Hover Wisp just kind of feels like a random afterthought because it just makes some sections that where you'd have to do parkour and stuff otherwise like a lot easier because the Good. The hosel, the hover wisp, is very simple to use, so you can just kind of use it to skip a lot of the tricky platforming stuff, and it just feels like they just again they just added that to make this level less annoying for some people, and it uh, it just feels so out. It just kind of feels out of place. Like that you could have removed it from this level, and it wouldn't really be missed, honestly. <laughs> But yeah. Otherwise, though, I do like this level as a test of your platforming skills. Okay, that was good. Yeah, I've been dying quite a bit in this game. Alright. 
Yeah, I think... I, I have been complaining a bit about, like, the Windy Hill, like, Green Hill... Like, bringing back, like, the Green Hill aesthetic. I will say this. Um, I think... I guess the Windy Hill design in this looks different enough from Green Hill. But I... Just ignoring that, though. I... I will say this, I do think this game has a, an, a, I do think it has, a, like, enough original, like, level concepts and general designs and stuff. Like, sure, it's taking a lot of cues from, like, Mario games, but I can give it a pass because I think they mix it up enough to make it stand out. And also, Sonic doesn't usually do these level tropes, so I feel, I feel like it feels a bit more, uh unique compared to, like, Mario, so. Yep. This is my full strength. And, gotta have the Bowser ripoff, because, yeah, that's essential, <laughs> essentially what this is. Just gonna knock some blocks into him. Yeah, th th this is, this is, this is just a Bowser fight, like, come on, guys. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> I didn't mean to drop down like that. Alright. I'll get this boss credit, like, at, le at least this boss is kind of interesting, like, uh... You can cut- you still kind of destroy him with the, um... With the charge home attack, but at, at least, like, he has a decent amount of health and, like... His moves are a little bit difficult to dodge. Like, this is, like, one of the only bosses in the game that actually put up a... Like, actually kind of put up a fight. Still, though, the... <laughs> they really should have nerfed that thing because the home attack being that busted just makes bo again it just makes bosses just go by way too quickly. Like maybe they the bosses would have been more interesting if you couldn't just kill them in like two like a lot of them in just like two hits. But like yeah, it is what it is. And again, like, giant Bowser. Like, this basically just feels like, uh, like, the Mario Wii fight. In, like, the, the, like, the giant... Good. Okay, yeah, that... <laughs> yeah, it's still fairly easy, but, like, it, it, you know, at least it's a little, little bit more interesting than the other fights. But, yeah, it's basically just the Mario Wii giant Bowser fight. Unfortunately, unfortunately, no one there is cool, but yeah. Oh god, who didn't see this coming? Eggman is the final boss. Whoa. I like the design. <laughs> I like it. And they just, he just starts smiling at the end, like, yeah, I'm gonna beat your ass. Yay! It's like, the hell. Okay. So before we do that, we have to do some more circus. Fun times. And yes, I I don't know if people have said this in the comments or, already or not, but yes, I, I am aware of the DLC and that's an easy way to get animals. But I, I'm deliberately saving that for post-game material, so... Like, I, I just want to show off, like... Yeah, it, it, it's not, like, these... It, it's not the best decision that they made it so you have to farm for animals to get through, like, the... Well, I think it's mainly just been, like, Zone 4, or, like, Act 4. Um, but, like... 
yeah, it is, it's definitely not ideal that they did this, but it's not too bad to get enough animals. So, they, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't really have a reason to show off these uh, circus mini games if I did 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 uh, the DLC now. So, yeah. I think there's also. Yeah. Okay. I had a feeling there was another secret stage, I just didn't know where it was. So, I guess we can do this now. And I think this is just a pure... Yeah, this is just a, like a... Strange platforming level. It's a... Uh... <laughs> I'm not really sure what to make of it, to be honest. But it's definitely something, alright. That lo- How the hell? I don't know how he's- Okay. Go like that, I guess. That's one way to do it. Yeah, yeah, this game is just so weird, because a lot of it is just so... Non-Sonic-like. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Can I just drop down here? Yep. I'm not gonna chance this. Yep. Ugh. Maybe, like, I feel like the... I feel like it would have been better if, like, the g instead of ha having the red rings only be for, like, unlocking circuses and getting supersonic, I think what have made them feel more rewarding is that it- is that they had it so the red ring- having enough red rings unlocked, like, these secret levels. And there's, like, the special- I think I mentioned it at this point, but there's also a special world after Lava Mountain. And I feel like if it just required you to get a bunch of the- red rings to unlock the levels in that game. Yeah, it would just feel a lot- it, it would just feel a lot better to fully complete this game, because like, it does feel a, a little bit eh to only have your rewards be circuses and uh, supersonic, and then you don't really have extra levels to play. Like, I'm pretty sure these levels are unlocked through how many animals you have, and not based on red rings or anything like that. So if they just changed that, I feel like this would be a lot better. Like, if you're gonna have, like, the animals, I guess you can keep them as, like, your requirement to unlock the final stage for a world. Like, that's fine, I guess. But, yeah, if the Red Rings just unlocks in additional levels like this, then I feel like it would be a lot better. I don't rem remember how many there are. Like, there's, a, there's, like, the four levels in the hidden, hidden world. And then there's at least two special levels that just kind of get unlocked. So, yeah. So that, that, having at minimum six unlockable stages through the red rings is... It's not bad. That, 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 it'd def definitely be better if there was more than that. But, you know, at least that's something. But that was definitely a level that existed. <laughs> I'm not again. I'm again. I'm not really sure what to make of that one. That's not enough to unlock the stage, though. So we need to do more circus. I'm getting more of the hang of these circus mini games, at least. I will say this. Um, I didn't really show it off, but, it, like, in gens, but, like, I do also like the Red Rings unlocking, like, concept art and different music for the ser from the series and, uh, other, like, just general m museum stuff. I do like that Generations did that, and I f don't really know why they don't do that anymore. Like, I feel like the Red Rings would, ju just by giving you concept art and stuff for the game, 
it would at least give you more of, more of, in of an incentive to to get them. Not really sure. Not really sure why they just stopped doing it after gens. Because it was, it just felt like you were constantly unlocking things in that game. And this game, it's like you either do all of it or you do none of it. It's yeah. It. I I'm not gonna say it's like sunshine level, but but it's uh. Mm. <laughs> it's getting there. Alright, let's do it. So I hope you liked, uh, what, what is it, the... The, the, the colours final boss. Because we're basically just doing that again. But a lot less interesting. And they're gonna do it again for forces. I, I don't understand the obsession with this boss. Like, it... It was a good boss in colours, but it wasn't like the best boss ever. And it just... Uh, like that hand attack is new, but with that, it it doesn't have the element of like villain using the abilities you used throughout the game, so it, it doesn't have that like cool factor anymore, and it's just I don't know, man. It's just such a it's just a much less interesting version of of the colors boss. The music's good though. I will say this. I do think the boss in the 3DS version is a lot better because he has like all these unique moves that the Wii U version doesn't have. Like I think at one point he sends out like a mini black hole, <laughs> and like it's a lot more dynamic with like the like the stuff he throws out at you. So I definitely like it in the I definitely like the 3DS version of this boss a lot more because this one is just it has like like three attacks and uh, that's it. <laughs> it's not that exciting. This bit can be a, this last phase here can be a little bit tricky because he like the way he like moves his attacks around, but it's not too bad. You just gotta have to be careful. Hey, yeah, he's gonna fake you out here, and that's all she wrote. It doesn't even have like a cool finisher like uh, the colors boss does. It's just, yeah. And it doesn't have like the cool animate like trick animations after the home attacks. It's, yeah. Like it's literally just the colors final boss. They don't even try to hide it. God. I like the des the design of the of the uh, Merc. I'll say that much. Like the energy cape, <laughs> like that's cool. But the actual fight itself is just kind of. Yeah. It's definitely one of the better bosses in the game, but like that's not saying much. And the city will be mine once again. Only next time, I'll make them stronger. <laughs> Honey, why isn't my jetpack working? Maybe because I borrowed the exhaust hose? <laughs> Sonic! Here's your energy back, world. Bon appetit! That is cool. I, li I, I like the I like the effect going on there. It's pretty. <laughs> Freaking trees, man. I would have wrapped this up sooner, but what are you gonna do? You know, after a day like today, I 
can enjoy a nap on some fresh green grass. And the game just kind of stops. <laughs> it's uh, not the most re remarkable ending. It doesn't like even colors had like a pretty like substantial finale. Like it, it felt like this is the end. Whereas like L Lost World, Lost World just kind of like ah, uh, we restored the energy. L let's just take a nap. End. <laughs> like it's just so low key. I mean, I guess it doesn't. These games don't always have to be, like, have a bombastic finale or anything, but, like, it's just so, it's just kind of, like, even the other, um, like, 2010 games that had this, like, more, um, light-hearted style, like, had, like, more, um, I want to say, like, fulfilling endings, but, meh, <laughs> whatever. I will say this, I do really like the Wonderworld theme that's playing right now. But yeah, just going through... I, we, are, we aren't done, done with the game yet, but uh, just going through my thoughts real quick. I kind of summed it up fairly uh, well at this point. Like, I, I, f I think this game is just a general series of ups and downs. Like, I like a lot of the level, level design and the uh, level tropes and whatnot. I think a lot of them are pretty cool. Um, I do like how they um, kind of trick you with a lot of levels where like you think you're going into a desert but it's like candy land or like you go into a the frozen like the ice level but there's a there's a casino stage and and like they use these like Mario like level themes but they I feel like they again I feel like they mixed them up to make them more distinct than just like generic desert, generic like jungle and stuff like that. I feel like they do enough to make them uh, stand out for this game specifically and they also have, again they also have like the stuff like desert ruins or the casino or the, I'm kind of drawing a blank but like just like these other level tropes that they sneak in as well so you kind of never really know what to ex what to expect when you enter a new stage. So I do like that about the game. Um, and I think the I think the red rings do a good job of like encouraging you to explore explore the levels because you don't really have uh, like a normal ranking system to do that for this game. And there's a I remember that like the time trials like I remember those being fairly strict to get the S ranks for, so you definitely have like um, that as well. And yeah, I, I don't. Know, I think this game is a good challenge. It's I, I don't mind the slower pace, but I can understand why that would be an issue for some people. And I'm not super thrilled with the idea of like a run button and like just being like three levels of speed. I think it would be a lot better if it was just. Like you could just um, naturally build up speed like the other games, and this, and it definitely would be more fun for the spin dash to work like adventure. But I think it works fine for the game for what it is. So yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, music, music is, like I've been saying, it's very hit and miss. And, yeah. <laughs> like, this is just a general series of ups and downs. Like, I like a lot of level design, but it has some weird elements that I'm not always the biggest fan of. And it, it 
does a lot of just like th there's a lot of weird weird gimmick stages that like some of them I really like. Like I like the rail the rail levels, even though that there's only two of them. But I like I think those are some of the best stages in the game. Um, I'm kind of on and off with the snowball level. I think it's fun enough, but it's it definitely has some annoying elements to it. Um, but then you have other stages that I just kind of don't know what to make of, like, uh, the, the, uh, that one hidden level we did, like, it's just kind of a weird state, I don't know, I don't even know what, what to make of it, it's just, it just kind of exists, and then you have, like, stages where you, you're kind of just flying in the air, <laughs> and it's just like, this game is just, it just feels kind of directionless sometimes, like, I feel like the main levels, when it's just trying to be a platformer, I think it is genuinely really solid, even if it is, again, one of the slower paced Sonic games. But, like, when it tries to be more, like, gimmicky, it feels like it just loses itself a little bit. Um, and it's definitely one of the most uneven Sonic games in regards to, the, to that. Because at, at least, like, I, 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 okay, I, I will like, actually play these stages in a minute, but, like, just to wrap up my thoughts here, like, even with, like, 06 or Shadow or anything like that, like, the, the those games don't feel like they suddenly go into weird territory with, like, their level gimmicks. It feels like the, the general concept for the levels stay true to what the game is trying to be, if that makes sense. Whereas, like, this game kind of just does whatever the hell it wants, and while some of those ideas are fun, some of them just don't really land, or they just kind of exist. And I again, I feel like if they just fo had this game with more focused level design, it would genuinely be like maybe I, I, I'm not gonna put a label on it, uh, like, but I, I I definitely would put it alongside uh, some of the other games in the series that I really like. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. I I do still really like this game. I had the mindset that I liked it more than Jens, <laughs> believe it or not. I don't know if I'd say that now. Um, maybe if this game had more, had less of the gimmick stuff and just more of the regular focused platforming stuff, um, I probably would. I, like Maybe I'd put it above Jens, but I think, I think my main reason for f uh, thinking that for a while was mainly because Again, you have so much more control in this game than you do in Gens, so I did really like that. And these, a lot of these levels do have a lot of alternate paths, so it definitely has a lot of replayability in that sense. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if I'd really call this. I, I don't know if I'd really put this above Gens nowadays. It, I definitely prefer Colors over this. I I will say that much. But um, yeah, I don't know.